the speeds are about to stop too fast so that means that somebody has done something they shouldn't have done it's fast right down to the one second end of the scale so I'm going to try backing out this end of the speed train which will have the effect of engaging the pallets more and uh, slowing the shutter down I hate adjusting these shutters it's always a real trial to get everything correctly timed but we'll see how we get on Hopefully it was a simple adjustment will do the trick. If I've got to move both ends of the speed train to get it to run, it becomes more awkward back later. Well there was a bit of toing and froing getting this um, shutter to work smoothly reliably and with times that were comparatively accurate but I got there in the end no parts were required simply adjustments getting things right that speed train was well out of the appropriate place however move on got my front and rear lens groups here and I certainly need to be cleaned the outside of the front group in particular is quite grubby so I want to clean that you can see the uh, the filth that's coming off there it looks almost like oil but I don't know what oil would be doing at the front of the shutter like that but I need to get all that um, dirt off the non-optical surfaces before I clean the glass I don't want contaminants like that lying around loose when I come to clean the glass that's all I want to be cleaning just the glass and I'll be using glass cleaner for the job you can see that lens is pretty hazy looking I'm hopeful that, that will clean up quite well I'm by no means certain that it will so I'm just using glass cleaner here I'll clean this a couple of times with a uh, dampened cotton bud the first time very lightly because I want to pick up any grit particles that might be on the surface and then um, after that you can be a bit you can apply a bit more pressure once there's no particles on the surface to remove any smears that might be on the surface sometimes there are oils or other residues on the surface and you need a bit more push to get rid of it that glass cleaned up remarkably well the outside surface is something else let's make sure I've got this mount all clean as I can get it That glass looks very clean so I will screw that in place on the shutter and turn my attention to the front surface I'll clean around the outside with a bit of uh, naphtha I'll try and get that dirt off around it around the name ring I don't want, really want to get naphtha on the glass surface but it's useful for getting dirt off the front of that name ring that's, that's really quite grubby I'm 
Right now I'll have a go at the glass. I'll do much the same. I will use light strokes with a dampened cotton bud. That's come off very dirty. And I'll do the same again. Now the third time I should just be removing any smears and making sure that there's nothing on that surface. Now I can see that there's a scuff on the uh, front surface there by the looks of it. I'll make sure it's not a mark that will clean away. It looks to me like a scuff in the front surface, which of course would not be unexpected with a lens on this particular camera because it's obviously had a very hard life. This is not a coated lens. That actually improved that time, so I'm going to have another go at that. It may have been something on the lens, something sticky. Oh, I'm quite pleased with the state of that. I think that that will that'll pass muster and that'll certainly take photos without any problems. Let me have a look at this rear group. In the rear group basically have got the same problem here. First I need to clean around the mount with some naphtha to lift off any oil and grease and of course the back of the shutter was quite greasy. Now I'll have a go at the glass. And when you get down to the uh, the final cleaning, always rotate your cotton bud so you keep presenting a fresh surface to the to the glass. That appears good. I'll screw that onto the shutter and do the outside surface. The dust and rubbish on that glass. Just wiping around that mount while I'm there. I've got the window light coming in from the side here so I can play the reflected light across the glass and it gives you a better indication of how, uh, 
how well you've got the thing clean. You can see a speck of something in there. I'm not sure that it's a speck of dust on the inside surface. Or it may be actually a, a fault in the glass. It's optical glass. Particularly at this time of manufacture, often had tiny bubbles in it. Well, I can certainly see some marks on the outside surface of that glass. Um, these aren't coated lenses, but glass over time will often react with the atmosphere and you end up with a, uh, a natural coating. That natural coating is very often fairly uneven but it's certainly there and it works like other coatings. Alright, I think that'll do. I think that can go back on the camera. Alright, to get this back on the camera first I've got to uh, remove this shutter con release connection here shutter into place replace that screw I usually do this before I um, put the retaining ring in place because otherwise this little bracket has a habit of tipping over and causing me grief Right, that's that. Now I'll put the retaining ring in place. Now there's no locating pin with these shutters. They're located strictly by friction. So getting the retaining ring done up tight is very important. It's not going in particularly square. Some of the early retinas in particular, the, there's not much clearance between the retaining ring and the mount. Yeah, it's sitting down there now. Yeah, there's virtually no clearance there. No wonder this was a bit awkward to get apart. Oh, I can see by the marks on that retaining ring that certainly someone tightening the retaining ring up had slipped as I can tell by the direction of the damaged metal Now I've checked that that would go on the shutter smoothly, but it's not moving smoothly in here, so it means it's sticking in the mount somewhat.
it's going on and it's certainly not cross threaded but it is tight Alright, see if I can get a tool down in there. Uh, that type tool doesn't really want to fit very well. Oh, I'm going to have to do this the hard way, I think. Alright, I'll be back once I've got this tightened up. I did say I'd do something about the faded leather on this camera. So let's see about that. I've got some spirit-based leather dye here. And I'm just going to clean this surface with a solvent to remove any oils or grease and so forth. Wax, of course. And then I'll treat it with some spirit-based dye. And what I want to achieve is a camera that's black, at least in the leather. because this is obviously very faded I can tell you from experience that that's probably from being exposed to light for a long long time so it's probably spent time on a shelf something like that Of course the leather on the front door here was flapping before. That's been all glued back in place. The leather on the base is just showing the normal wear and tear. Right, oh, that's enough of that solvent. Go silly on that stuff, must be for glue, made for glue snuffers. Right, the spirit base dye. It even comes with a little brush. Let's see how we get on. Now I can do anything I like with this stuff except knock that bottle over. Otherwise I will not be popular. Well I don't much like that I think I'll use a cotton bud to apply that. Makes a better applicator. There you go, starting to look a bit better already. Now this stuff is pretty good. It wasn't ridiculously expensive. Of course it's probably meant for doing handbags or jackets or pairs of shoes or something, so there's Plenty to go around little cameras.
Now this is a spirit based die, it's not a polish. I will polish this leather shortly. But first I want to get this die in there and this will soak into the leather to some extent. Right, that'll do for that. I'll leave that to dry for a bit and then I will get out some wax polish and finish this leather. Get it looking not, not new but looking better. Oh, I think I've even got instructions in here in English somewhere, have I? No, I've got every other language known to man. Oh, here we go. Yes, that's mostly telling you not to drink it and keep it away from children. There wasn't much instructions there in the way of how to use it, how long it takes to dry or anything of that nature. I'll leave that for a few minutes, I'll come back and wax it. Well enough time has passed, since I'm so impatient we'll get this stuff on here. This is a wax polish, it's uh, very good, it's quite rich in pigment. It's not as good as a spirit based dye in terms of colouring leather, but it'll put the shine back on it. This camera has caused me to do quite a bit of work really. It's, it was certainly no thing of beauty when it arrived here and it's fair to say it's had its share of hidden problems. Most of them, some of them are just down to use. Use and abuse, it's, it's, it's old, it's had a hard life. Some of it was not. Some of it was repair work that was probably not completed as well as it might have been. I don't think I've mentioned everything that I've had cause to replace on it. But I replaced a lever in the film advance uh, mechanism. Part of the, the mechanism that meters how much film travels through. It was set, it was worn and it was bent and I suspect it may have been reshaped a little bit. I replaced two springs. One was clearly not the original spring. One was was the original spring, but it had been bent out of shape. And in the interests of uh, convenient since I had one on site on hand I just replaced it with another one so I've re replaced two springs one of which I could probably have straightened out and reused replaced the lever and the film advance mechanism replaced that missing piece because there was the missing piece in the film advance which had uh, 
prevented the top, prevented the film advance knob from even turning, let alone anything else inside. In the shutter, well the shutter caused me some problems. Most of the problems with the shutter were really caused by the uh, retard gear train was out of adjustment and it was probably out of adjustment because somebody had adjusted it instead of servicing the shutter first in an attempt to get the speeds to work where they wanted them to work. I'm guessing that. I don't know that for sure. But that's typically how those things happen. In the normal course of events, if a camera has been serviced well in the past, there's no reason to change any of the adjustments. Things do not typically go out of adjustment. What happens is that stuff just gets sticky with oil and grease and so forth and ceases to move as it should but the adjustments themselves they, they don't move, there's no reason for them to move as a result if you get a camera that doesn't work properly because it needs to be serviced and you clean it and lubricate it correctly you will find that after that it'll work fine you don't need to spend an hour or two adjusting things, especially compo shutters, which are, are always a pain to do. All right, so I've managed to spread some black wax and uh, dye everywhere. But here's our camera. It's looking pretty good. I'll give it one last wipe over before I send it back to its owner. But uh, there you have it. It's been in their family presumably since new. This one would have come out of Germany in the, at the end of the 40s. It's not one of the earliest of the 010s, but uh, it's not one of the last of them either. Got an uncoated lens on there, Kodak and a Stigmat. That's cleaned up well. I have to say it wasn't looking very promising at one stage, but that's good. So now we've got it. The shutter's working well. Focus is nice and smooth. I did have to adjust the focus. It was out, um, yeah, enough to cause a problem. It was certainly out, so I'm it certainly needed to be adjusted. I suspect that the focus scale ring had slipped at some stage on the outer helical, given the scars that were there when I took it apart, and I that would certainly explain it. Right, well there we have it. Nice Retina 1 type 010. This is not the prettiest example that you'll ever come across, but it's a working camera and I'm sure the owner will be pleased to see it coming home. Thanks for watching.